Alrighty, here's the uh, first new compressor that I got that was defective and I'll show you why. Listen carefully. It clutch gets tight there. It's rubbing there. Rubs there. Rubs there. 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 Now, it gets extremely tight in one spot. So this isn't a matter of just the air gap. Right there. It gets very tight. So, there's something bent. And we're going to find out what it is. Because I'm curious. Now, I've gotten a refund on this compressor. They did not want it back um, due to shipping and everything, but uh, I want to take it apart and see what's going on here. Now this is a brand new compressor. It's aftermarket. I already have a new compressor, another one that I got from a different company, a different brand uh, that's working fine and is on the truck already. So uh, we're going to take this one apart. see if we can figure out what the uh, problem is with this clutch. Now right off the bat, this is weird, you can't get the, uh, the clutch off, it should just pull right off. So right off the bat we have a questionable thing going on here, there we go. Okay, I'm just a little bit too tight, and yeah, it really hasn't been crazily done. Um, seems to be rubbing on the outside edge only. You can see here that it's rubbing on the outside only. Um, I guess the thing to do would be to put this on a plate and a flat one. Well, let's do this. We'll get this out of the way. We'll get this on there and we'll spin it around see if we can visually see anything. And It doesn't look like we can visually see anything there. So what I want to do is um, I think I'll use this old uh, piece of crap gauge. Yeah, it may not be the best way to do it. Okay. Yep. We definitely have a a clutch plate that's bent. And actually you can see here, uh, it's kind of hard to see in the light, but the inner scraping stops right about there and then picks up again right here. So there's a good area right in here that it's scraping. So this clutch plate is bent down in here. Now I don't know, you know, let me try something here. Since this is an aftermarket compressor, I don't know if the uh, stock factory clutch plate will work. Oh, it does. Well, it doesn't appear to be hitting like that, but the problem here is that the seal blew out in here as well, which means to me that it's a good possibility the shaft 
that's in there. I don't know if we're showing this on camera. Whoops. Yeah, okay. If this shaft is somehow bent because the seal runs back in here, right about that area, and if this got bent at all, then it would have wiped the seal out. So, right now, uh, I think I will take the clutch off, and it's going to be hard to spin this compressor by hand with just the nub on here, but, um, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, it should come apart fairly quick. I can see the lighting isn't real good in here today. The, uh, the sun hasn't come out. Okay, we'll I'll take that out of the way. See if that'll pull right off. Should. Yep, there we go. Okay, so in order to see, I think maybe the best way to find out to do this, see if we can visually see any kind of movement in there. Um, it might be advantageous. God damn, they got enough Loctite on there. Jesus Christ. Um, again with this. We'll put that in there and kind of lock it down and we'll turn it. Oh yeah. Yep. Shaft is bent because this is the, the old clutch plate and as I'm turning it there it gets loose, and there it gets tight. Yep. So we got a bent shaft in here. Now the question is, will the old shaft from the stock compressor... Ah, damn it. Oh gosh. Alright. Uh, will the stock shaft from the original compressor factory fit into this aftermarket compressor? If it does, I can put this together with this old shaft, hopefully set up my end plate properly, and use the old clutch, which uh, will, of course... The old clutch, uh, it seems that the pressure plate's about the same size, but the pulley is a bigger pulley for all the replacement ones. I think this is a 5 inch and this is a 6 inch pulley, which I'd rather stick with the, uh, the newer one if the clutch plate, which I believe it should be the same. Yeah, it is. So I can use my old pressure plate and also uh, reuse the magnet, which I know works because I had this thing running. And uh, while I'm at it, I can re-index the magnet with the uh, electric connection to the top like the original compressor had. So uh, I'm going to take this apart but I'm not going to do that on camera or uh, I might. Um, hang on a minute here. And I'll tell you another thing uh, about the uh Okay about these magnets here when you're pulling them off and why I do it the way I do it. 
if you use a claw puller, a claw puller and you're pulling or pushing on that shaft, it's not really good for these bearings inside here, for one thing, okay? Uh, number two, what's happening is you're bending it out, which is causing that ring, which presses on there, to kind of even grab tighter coming off. Now I'm sure they make some kind of a horseshoe plate that will have a puller going onto this area or you know well or maybe even nah, I don't know probably to the bolt area some type of a puller that doesn't push on the shaft this is why I use um, the uh, drift the punch uh, bronze or brass punch to knock that off of there um, of course with this thing being indexed improperly it's going to be a real pain in the butt yeah that uh, will take a little bit of a back and forth because the moving around on that plate now. <laughs> you can do this with a piece of wood too, uh, although you won't get as good of a crack on it with the wood. Just go gentle, go back and forth, you know, it'll, it'll pop right off of there, and no big deal. Just takes a little bit of time to do it, and I know there aren't going to be a lot of people interested in this, but for those that are that want to see the actual work done, there you go. Uh, there's the magnet, and that's how it presses on with the uh, inner script right onto that groove. And you don't want to dig into it with a puller bending this thing. Plus, you don't want to break the uh, magnet and the Bakelite and everything. So, uh, yeah, we're going to have to uh, uh, take this apart. And let me pull those bolts real quick while we're on camera. And uh, let's see what we got here. Where did I put my... Uh, should be 10 millimeter. loosen them in a cross pattern but I don't know I don't have high hopes for any of this tightening definitely in a cross pattern so let's do that okay and there's all that goopy goppy dye or uh, oil AC oil and there's our pistons that are in there. Okay, now, ah, wow. Okay, a lot of oil there. We need to get some Raggedy Ann. It's got the AC die in it too, which is great. Um, I want to take our valve plate off, get it, uh, yeah, get it back in there, kind of where it belongs. Uh, see, aftermarket compressor, the pins aren't in the body; they're in the uh, in this. Kind of stupid idea, shit. Um, so we can do this. Now the big question is, not if it'll work, uh, hang on a minute, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Now the main question here, 
wouldn't be the length or anything like that, but it's going to be the uh, the diameter of this. And then the question too is the seal in the body. So. We've got 531, oh yeah, that's going to be, and 531. Alright, so the shafts are the same on uh, both of them. So far we're looking good. The, uh, the only thing now is take this apart and, uh, get the front seal out of this unit here where there's a snap ring in there and you can get the seal out with that um, you'll need a smaller pair of these because that won't uh, get in there and it's a small snap ring so we'll go on from there and uh, once I get to that point I will continue on and let you know where I end up with this thing.